So how did I come to know Angie? Um, well, Angie came to one of my conferences um, along with her husband, who's a physician. And, you know, she sat there and listened to every word that I spoke um, and gobbled it up and processed it well. And it was sort of odd, you know, she was, I can be intimidating <laughs> when I lecture and train people. And a lot of people don't want to approach me because they, they find that I'm intimidating, although, you know, in, in real life, I'm not. So I, I ran into Angie in an elevator um, and she asked me this question. Um, and uh, I, I gave her an answer and, and she responded and her response was like, um, I can't believe her response. She has so much insight. She has a lot of experience. She has a lot of passion, but she was so well-spoken on the subject matter that it sort of surprised me. So I got back into the lecture um, and started talking and I said, you know, I, I encountered this um, uh, conversation with a practitioner and I would like that practitioner to stand up and explain uh, what she did to me so that everyone else could understand what flows out of her mouth is so eloquent uh, and so true. And I typically do not see that in physicians. And so I said, you know, of course, the audience is going, well, who is this person? So I said, Angie, stand up and talk. And of course, she was like, oh, my God, it's me. You know, don't put me on the spot. Wait a minute. I'm, I, I can't get up and speak to a whole group of physicians. Oh, yeah, you can. You know, just you know, <laughs> we're, 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 we're all the same. We all want to help patients. We all want to learn the subject material. So then she, you know, she started speaking. Um, and that's sort of what started our relationship was that it was, if it wasn't for her talking with me in the elevator, and it wasn't for me having her get up and speak in front of a large group of physicians on, on hormones and what her experience was, and to sh sort of teach us and show us that, you know, what a lot of you doctors out there are doing is not necessarily correct. And you need to understand this better. You, you need to understand what works. <laughs> it was like, here this nurse is standing up and telling the doctors what works. Well, as you know, Stephen, way back in your training and my training, um, who taught us the most? It was the nurses. It was the nurses in the hospital. It was the nurses everywhere else. You know, it was like, you know, the nurses sort of took us by the hand and taught us and trained us. Um, and so, you know, my, my heart goes out to all the nurses that have educated me over the years. Um, and my heart goes out to Angie because she's educated so many patients that would otherwise not be as educated as it would be um, thanks to her. So that's what started my relationship with Angie. Um, and since that time, uh, you know, we communicate probably, you know, on an every other day basis. And she send me cases and problems and questions and, and I send them back. And she has such insight and, and such, um, the, the best way I, I can explain this in simple terms is she gets it. She grasps it. Physicians don't always grasp it. Well, that's not the way I was taught or trained. Well, that, well, that's not right. You know, the numbers are too high. The, 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 the levels don't make sense. And her point of contention is, well, we really don't care what the number is. We care that the patient feels better and that the patient's symptoms improve. She's an expert at that, which is why people gravitate to her, which is why she's doing the podcast, because she has tremendous, uh, let me use the term more experience than most physicians and has a lot more insight uh, into what works and what works for both men and women that most physicians don't know or understand. And, and she's more than happy to explain her husband didn't know or understand this at the beginning either. Now he does. Um, but Angie really understands it. She really gets it. And um, so it, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Angie Nichols. Uh, sorry for the long winded uh, introduction, but I think it's, you know, it, it's due. And I think both men and women that are listening to the podcast need to understand, you know, why we're interviewing her because of her tremendous insight, experience, passion, desire, and lack of fear of treating patients to get their symptoms improved as opposed to we doctors simply worrying about numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. So Angie, okay. the ball's in your court. That is so kind of you to say, I really appreciate all of your kind words. Uh, and I appreciate everything that you have uh, taught Keith and I over the last 10 years. But the bottom line is, what has that done for your patients? Oh, it changed That's the key. 
Yeah, it changes lives every day, and that's what makes it so fun. And it's it's at any age. When patients come in in their 40s or 50s or 80s, it's the same response. Patients respond pretty much the same across the board. Um, you just increase the hormones until the symptoms go away. You know, it seems very simple now. It wasn't in the beginning, but you just... And, and now, how long did it take Keith to learn that? <laughs> well... It took a little while. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah, um, with ex with time and experience, you know, you learn what works. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, sure. And I think that doctors maybe, like you talk about, have more confirmation bias because you're trained so rigidly, you know, about staying within numbers and guidelines. And, you know, I've thought about this a lot when we were talking about doing the podcast. And when you say that, you know, um, it's more fun or it's easier to train nurses or nurse practitioners, I think that goes back to, you know, we're trained very much in problem solving and approaching each patient as an individual. And it's sort of intuitive that we understand that what works for one patient isn't going to work for the next patient because we are all so unique and different. And so that's what, I mean, something that really um, hit home with me is that, you know, one patient may feel great with a testosterone level you know, say at 900, and it may take someone else being 1100 to feel their best, you know, so there's no cookie cutter way to do this. It's you just have to listen to what they have to say. And, and Neil used to always say too, if you listen to your patients long enough, then they will tell you what the problem is. And if you listen even longer, they will tell you how to fix it. And that is so true. If you will just take the time to listen to what your patient is saying, then um, you'll get it. Yeah, the trouble is physicians are stuck, one, on not listening to the patients because we don't have time. Um, you know, I, I, I say that sort of tongue in cheek. Um, and, and secondly, we're stuck on numbers. And when the number gets to 900, you say, okay, well, I can't go any higher. And you go, well, wait a minute. You know, the patient goes, well, what about my symptoms? And the doctor says, well, we really, really don't care about your symptoms. We care about the numbers. And the patient says, yes, but, you know, my, my friend feels well, and, you know, but I don't. Well, we, we can't raise your dose any because your, your, your numbers, your levels. And, you know, I've not met a nurse practitioner that has walked up to me and said, I'm afraid of a number. What I'm afraid of is not improving the symptoms. And that's why nurses get it. <laughs> that's why nurses grasp it. Um, and physicians don't because physicians are stuck on numbers. We have a confirmation bias against it. We have a confirmation bias about going outside of that range, and that range is an average level of old sick people, and we don't really know what or understand what normal means. Uh, normal's not optimal. Normal's not where you're gonna feel the best. Normal's not where you're gonna function the best. But normal is an average of old sick people that's printed on a lab page, and we don't wanna go above that number. Well, I've been a nurse for over 25 years, um, and we have been um, studying hormone optimization for a little over a decade. And the reason that we got interested in it in the first place was because, well, for me, I was around 36, 38. I started having some symptoms. It was fatigue that I had never had before. And uh, I was working as a school nurse at the time. And um, my patients just kind of lost me. It was like an irritability that I had never experienced. And I thought, this is not me. Something is wrong with me. Um, but it was the fatigue, really, and the irritability. And um, so I went to the doctor, he was a GYN, and he said, Angie, let me tell you, everything that you're explaining to me right now is hormone related, but I don't have time to learn all that. I'm busy delivering babies and performing hysterectomies. And I thought, wow, you know, I appreciate your honesty, but if a gynecologist can't advise me on hormones for women, who in the world can? And so... Um, I started trying to figure it out just as Keith, uh, he's told his story and it was a similar experience for him. He was told, you know, we're just getting older. This is what happens, you know, and we weren't ready to accept that. So we started trying to figure out answers and things that could help us. And then of course, once we found those answers and we saw what a difference it made, you know, we wanted the natural thing was to want to share that with our friends and our family and then extend that on to our patients. And um, when we saw what a dramatic change it made in their lives, you know, Neil talks about also in the courses, you know, he's 
saved all kinds of lives through the ER and nobody ever comes back and really says, wow, thank you so much for saving my life. But it's regularly that we get calls or cards or emails from patients going, wow, what a tremendous difference you have made in our day-to-day -day quality of life. And so that's what makes it fun. And it was just our personal experience really that uh, led us down this path. Uh, I'm glad that you got to experience it yourself. And, and as you've heard me say, and you've heard many other practitioners say in the courses, it wasn't until they did it themselves that they saw the difference. It wasn't until they did it themselves or on their staff or their, or their significant other, their spouses, that they saw the difference. And when they finally saw and felt the difference, it was like an epiphany of like, okay, now I get it. I don't understand why I didn't get it, but I didn't get it until I truly felt it and saw it. And then when I felt it and saw it, now I understand. But I didn't understand it before. I didn't grasp it because it didn't make sense because that's not the way that we were taught and trained. But once somebody feels it and sees it like you did and Keith, it's like, okay, there's no turning back. We have to do this. We have to share this with the world, which is my passion for teaching, as you know. Mm -hmm. And does it seem logic that men, uh, because of uh, their own experience, are more interested in uh, male hormone optimization? And women, uh, as you, Angie, are more interested into female hormone optimization? Or does that cross us over? Well, I'll answer for Angie first. Um, Angie always says to me, you know, when we make the wives feel better, they drag in their husbands. In my experience, when I can make the husbands feel better, they drag in their wives. So uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a team sport. And it's interesting that Oh, all you have to do is make the spouse feel better if it's male or female, and they will then drag in their spouse because they want their spouse to feel better also. So yes, it's important for women. Yes, it's important for men. But when men bring in their spouses and make them feel better and women bring in their spouses and make them feel better, it's a win-win for everyone. And, and Angie's really good at doing that. She's got lots of stories about, you know, uh, all of the wives that bring in their husbands, drag them in, you know, and of course, you know, the poor guys don't know why they're there. And it's suddenly when they feel better, it's like, oh my God, now I see what you're talking about. So anyway, go ahead, Angie. It's fun for me. I mean, as far as women or men, for me, there's no preference. It's just, you know, getting to see people feel better, male, female, whatever, you know, they just feel better. It's quality of life. That's what makes it fun. That's what, drives me to get up every morning and do what, what I do every day and try to study and continue to learn more. It, you know, male, female, doesn't matter. The prescription that is written, Dr. Nichols writes that uh, I do a lot of consultations with patients and I can provide education. That's one of the big things that nurses always do is provide lots of education. And that's one of the things that I enjoy most. So uh, I do meet with patients, do consultations with patients every day. But ultimately, the prescriptions that are written, those all come from Dr. Nichols. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Things like that. And oh. orders lab work, and we follow the lab work and review all of the patients. Of course, you know, he's looking at the data, and then I'm telling the story. So it kind of fits well together because, you know, it's like, okay, well, here's their number. Okay, but they're still having this problem. Well, if we maybe go a little more here or a little less there, maybe we can fix that problem. So it really is a team effort um, on a daily basis. With all due respect to Keith and me, um, in my practice, we have an Angie also, whose name is Carolyn. And it, it is Angie and Carolyn that are the central hub of our practices and, and make the wheel roll. But in spite of the fact that Keith and I know the science and literature, um, it's Carolyn and Angie that educate the patients. And when the patient comes, calls back with an issue or a question, um, they don't ask for Keith, they don't ask for me, they ask for Carolyn or Angie um, because they bond with them because you know Angie and Carolyn know so much about this um, and can relate and educate and teach. Whereas we physicians, again, all due respect, you know, we're just not good at it. You know, we, we may know the science or the papers. Um, we're not good at teaching. We're not good at the day-to-day -day interactions that the nurses are superb at. So um, again, the reason Angie is here and not Keith is because Angie's the educator. She's the one that everyone bonds with. People don't call in and ask for me. They call in and ask for Carolyn. They don't call in and ask for Keith. He knows the material. He's a really nice guy. They want, they want Angie. 
Absolutely. I use the car, the analogy with a car all the time. You know, um, the body is a finely designed machine, just like a car. And you couldn't only put gas in your car. You've got to put oil and transmission fluid and brake fluid. And our hormones are like that for the body. So we need them all just like a car needs all of those things.